where does American activism against racial injustice and sexism intersect? And who remains the most overlooked and marginalized by default? This next title reveals the answer, and I'd recommend it to everyone. Welcome to Audiobook Reviews in 5. This is Jana, also known as Yana. Today I'm reviewing Eloquent Rage, a Black feminist discovers her superpower, written and narrated by Brittany Cooper. Dr. Brittany Cooper is an associate professor of women's and gender studies and Africana studies at Rutgers University in the United States. She is a co-founder of the Crunk Feminist Collective and co-editor of the collection of essays of the same title, which explore intersectionality, African-American culture, and hip-hop feminism. The title, Eloquent Rage, refers to a compliment from one of Cooper's students, who praised her ability to eloquently channel her anger and insights about race and gender into persuasive explanations and arguments for what needs to change in America. Cooper references many Black feminists throughout, including Ida B. Wells, the Kambahi River Collective, Beyonce, and Michelle Obama, but she repeatedly returns to Audre Lorde's Sister Outsider, as a kind of feminist Bible. Lord famously wrote of anger that, quote, focused with precision, it can become a powerful source of energy, serving progress and change, unquote. This is important because Cooper repeatedly contrasts this use of anger to violent uprisings that reflect an inclination to burn or destroy systems and infrastructure instead of reframing or rehabilitating our current circumstances. Of being a black woman in the United States, Cooper says, we live in a nation that does everything to induce our rage while simultaneously doing everything to deny that we have a right to feel it. So, where does this anger come from? Here's where Cooper's eloquence truly shines. She highlights the bigotry of American feminist movements that center on whiteness as well as the anti-racist movements that perpetuate problematic systems of patriarchy and male aggression. She sums up the source of the current problem by stating that white women and black men share a kind of narcissism that comes from being viewed as the most vulnerable entities within their respective races. Cooper illustrates the treachery of white women, who presumably voted against their own interests as women, when they turned out to vote for Donald Trump, following what Cooper describes as an election campaign that was a re-litigation of the 1950s and the 1960s. She also illustrates the expectations of black men who center themselves in anti-racist protests, but fail to put black women at the center of their activities. Here, I was reminded of the recent demonstrations following the death of George Floyd but the lack of similar protests specifically dedicated to Breonna Taylor, also a victim of police violence in the United States. That said, I was surprised by Cooper's adherence to norms about heterosexual relationships, marriage, and especially motherhood. She doesn't seem to question this as a default choice for all women, and seems to emphasize that all or most black women in particular want children, and are simply prevented from having them by lack of access to supportive partners and economic marginalization. But otherwise, she effectively eviscerates mainstream white feminism, respectability politics, and anti-racist ideas that center patriarchy. Cooper's narration can be just slightly rushed at times, but overall I was riveted by her ideas and her conversational tone and style in this collection of essays. She pairs slang seamlessly with academic-sounding terms like epistemology and intersectional identity politics. It's like listening to an especially brilliant friend speak her mind. And I found it really easy to get through this audiobook in a single day, and then I actually went back to sections to re-listen. One of my favorite quotes, the clarity that comes from rage should also tell us what kind of world we want to see. 
not just what kind of things we want to get rid of. This is inspiring work, so check it out. That's all for this episode of Audiobook Reviews in 5. Thanks for listening. If you have not yet done so, please subscribe to Audiobook Reviews in 5 on your favorite platform. By subscribing, you can help increase the profile of this podcast and chances of other listeners finding it. I look forward to checking in with you all again soon. Please stay safe and be well. 